Hey guys, Leatherwolf here. Just some information I need to share real quick regarding this video. I originally uploaded this to YouTube back in June of 2021 and wound up immediately unlisting it due to some discrepancies with the content and me misspelling the series title in the opening sequence. Since that time, the city of Milwaukee has successfully managed to take ownership of the mall from Black Spruce and have a plan laid out to have it completely demolished by the fall of 2025. Some demolition has actually already started on the former Boston Store Anchor Building as of March 20th of 2024. The video was a collaboration project between myself and Justin from the Podcast Dojo. Special thanks to John Rev as well. He provided me some great vintage photos of the mall that you will see in this video. And lastly, I apologize for the audio. When I originally recorded, I didn't have a microphone and was using my phone. So it's not the best, but you can tell what I'm saying. So that counts. And that is the latest on the property. Let's get into the video. The Northridge Mall is located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and is the sister mall to the still-operating Southridge Mall, which is exactly 20 miles away. Both malls were developed in partnership between the Cole family, as in the Cole's department store chain, and Taubman Developments. The mall opened three years after the opening of its twin in the year 1973. The original anchors were Sears, JCPenney, Boston Store, and Gimbel's. Interestingly enough, despite Kohl's being involved in the development, and unlike the Southridge Mall, the department store chain never held an anchor pad at Northridge. Northridge did very well throughout the remaining 70s and 80s as it catered well to families, not to mention courtesy golf cart rides for patrons and an incredibly awesome retro two-story cinema. Many events took place at the mall, the most notable being a performance by Scott Plunkett in 1986. During this time, an unintentional rivalry between Northridge and Southridge formed and was heavily used in advertising. They're just candy. Cards. Cards. Puppies. Puppies. Plus gift certificates good at 120 Southridge stores. Northridge has gift certificates good at over 120 stores too. The best selection is at Southridge. The best selection is at Northridge. Southridge has a bigger fountain. For the best selection in either direction this Valentine's Day, at Northridge and Southridge. There was a remodel in 1988 removing signature Tubman elements and going for more of an indoor park vibe. The remodel also included a brand new food court called Sky Ridge Cafe. When the mall was purchased by some outside investors after the Cole family sold off their assets. The list of assets included Southridge Mall. Never again would both malls be owned by the same company. While all these events were taking place, only one anchor pad would go through multiple changes. Gimbel's would have a short life at the mall, going under in 1986. Marshall Fields would take over the space in 1987 and would promptly become H.C. Prangies from 1988 until 1992. Yonkers would buy out Prangies in 1992 and would stay open at the mall till 2000. After Yonkers' departure, the anchor pad would remain vacant till the mall's closure in 2003. J.C. Penney would be the second anchor to leave the mall. The store closed on June 1st in the year 2000 due to declining sales, followed by Sears on January 26th of 2002. 
Outside Northridge Mall, the parking lot is nearly empty. No cars, no people, and as of today, no Sears Auto Center. The repair shop closed today, and the department store will shut its doors for good on January 26th. The reason? Underperformance. Now, nearly 200 people will lose their jobs. Boston store would be the final anchor to leave Northridge. The closure was nostalgic for many people, as it was the first anchor to open and the last anchor to close. The last day was sometime around March of 2003. Boston store was the only store left at Northridge. Now, in March 2003, it too will be gone. We have a huge commitment to the city, uh, to the city and the region of Milwaukee. Carol, vice president of Boston store's parent company, says this doesn't mean his company is less committed to Milwaukee. No, I think we were waiting to see what the outcome of uh, any redevelopment plans were going to be. And after we uh, understand pretty much what that was going to be like, we, uh, uh, we made our decision. He says they tried to maintain a presence in the Northridge area, but it was becoming increasingly difficult. We were hoping that that store was going to make it, but uh, in today's world, it's a little difficult to do that if you're, you don't have a lot of traffic uh, around you. Milwaukee Alderman Tom Nardelli says today's announcement didn't come as a surprise. He sees it as opportunity. It creates a, a new day for what hopefully will be a, a new and thriving retail complex uh, over time uh, that will be called uh, the uh, Granville Station. But for the retailer's loyal customers, a reincarnation of the area is at this point of little comfort. They know they can drive across town to find another Boston store. They just don't want to. In my part of town, this is where I go, Boston store. I'm outraged. Now what are they going to do? In my research, I was unable to find an exact date, but it appears that Boston store's closing was the final nail in the coffin for the mall, and it more than likely closed shortly after. So where did it all go wrong? This was well before online shopping really took off, and even today that doesn't play a major role as some people would think. So what are the other reasons that a mall can go under? Changing demographics, accessibility, competition, and a major one, crime. From Channel 12's 24-hour news service, you're watching Southeastern Wisconsin's number one 10 o'clock news with Jerry Town, Marty burns Wolf, meteorologist John Malone, Tom Sutton, and the Channel 12 news team. Tonight, people at Northridge Mall are glad the Anderson trial is over, too. Before he was arrested for his wife's murder, some feared a random killer was loose in that area. The verdict eased their concern. We know that they listened to many hours of testimony, some of which was given by two Northridge shoppers. And we feel that the jury came up with the best decision possible. She also says the verdict reinforces that Northridge is a safe place to shop. In 1992, a man named Jesse Anderson took his wife out to dinner at the TGI Fridays near the mall. After dinner, he stabbed her multiple times and then himself on the mall property. When questioned by police, Jesse claimed that two African-American men attacked them. He showed the officers an L.A. Clippers baseball cap that he claimed had been worn by one of the attackers. He was later charged with murder after the person he bought the cap from came forward. Even though the story was bogus, it was too late. The murder gave Northridge an unsafe reputation and patrons began shopping elsewhere. Throughout the 90s, more and more stores would leave, with drywall going up to cover vacant storefronts. Northridge was on life support, and the closing anchors at the turn of the millennium would pull the plug on this once thriving mall. After the mall closed, revitalization attempts were made. The property was renamed Granville Station, and the former Sears was demolished and replaced by Minard's Home Improvement along with a pick-and-save supermarket. Value City Furniture also opened up in part of the former Boston store. And if you look at the Google Street View, you can see that they changed part of the building facade, and the Value City label scar is still available. Value City would close its doors on May of 2009, followed by Pick and Save in September of 2014. Other than a Taco Bell, Menards is the only local retail store still operating in the mall property, and they appear to still be doing pretty well. While these revitalization attempts were in progress, the interior of the mall was completely sealed off. Doors and windows were boarded up and a large wall was erected around the food court entrance. The only major change to the interior was when Menards was constructed. Menards cut into the Sears court just enough that the escalators had to be removed. But other than that, the building was completely unaltered. Only on Fox 6 right now, it's like a video game that has come to life. 
Northridge uh, Mall transformed into a simulated war zone this weekend. Fox 6's Ashley Sears take you, takes you to the Airsoft War Games. A post apocalyptic setting. Empty stores. It's intense. Limited light. It's, it's chaos at times. Dark Mall is filled with hundreds of soldiers. Everywhere you turn, a battle is brewing. You're going through fear, you're going through excitement, um, you're going through every emotion probably possible. They're on a mission in a simulated war game. Sorry. Oh. Here, the guns are filled with airsoft bullets. The renegades are fighting the Federation Army. So both sides are fighting for territory, and we call this the Northridge Biodome. The airsoft military simulation is more than just a hobby. We just get focused on the missions that we have to, you know, accomplish. You know, we count on each other. We have our battle buddies just like in the service. For Andre Tillman, a U.S. Army and Navy veteran, these games have special meaning. They pay tribute to what, you know, people like myself and others have done. The mall has been used for airsoft events since its closure. In 2018, the mall was rented out to the airsoft store, MIR Tactical, who continued to use the building for airsoft events. Normally, I'm not one to call people out, and while the consequences may not have been intended, the mall was exposed to over 12 million subscribers on December 18, 2017 by YouTube star Casey Neistat. Casey rented out the mall and turned the center court into a winter wonderland for children from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee. It was an amazing event and the video itself was amazing to watch, but my message to Casey is this. With great power comes great responsibility. At the beginning of the video, he shared the name of the mall, the city the mall was located in, and how long it had been abandoned. After information like that is revealed, all it takes is a Google search to find the rest of the information on the building. After the mall was exposed, it was regularly broken into and vandalized. A number of well-known YouTubers released videos on the mall, including Ace's Adventures and Seth Lawless, The Proper People, and one of my favorite Urbex explorers, R and K All Day. As these videos continued to come out, the vandalism and decay was noticeably worsening in the background. Viewers were noticing the worsening condition, including the city of Milwaukee. Now, before we keep going, I need to take things back to 2008 when a Chinese investment group called U.S. Black Spruce Enterprise Group Incorporated purchased them all for a sum of $6 million, and they did absolutely nothing with the property. Black Spruce was non-existent and didn't pay any property taxes. In 2013, William Penzi of Penzi Spices announced intentions to buy them all for use for the company operations. To avoid losing them all, Black Spruce made a last-minute payment halting the foreclosure auction and stating that supposed plans to turn them all into an Asian marketplace and office complex. However, not surprisingly, no plans or permits have been presented and only communication the city has with Black Spruce is refusals to cooperate on alternative plans for the mall and payments to retain ownership of the property. With this new situation Black Spruce was put in, they buckled down and got serious about securing and maintaining the mall. Unfortunately, tragedy struck at the mall shortly after work began. It was a really good dad and a really good brother. For Victoriano Diaz's family, an unimaginable loss. The father of six was working for Northridge's owner Black Spruce as a maintenance worker for the abandoned property. According to a medical examiner's report, Diaz was leaving Monday night when he saw an open electrical box, tried to close it, but was shocked. He died at the scene. Once we got to the location and you see the ambulance and everything taped up and that's when, that's when it hits you in the heart because that's when it becomes reality. First, my heart broke. Um, because it was, it was my worst fear actualized. Older woman Shantia Lewis has been fighting to knock down Northridge Mall, saying it's a safety risk and a target for thieves and vandals. The city approved an order to raise the building, which the mall's owners are fighting. Is this building too dangerous to stand? Absolutely. Black Spruce sent us this statement, quote, Black Spruce is aware of the tragic circumstances which occurred outside Northridge Mall on Monday evening. We are sorry for the family's loss and will fully cooperate with authorities, end quote. For Diaz's family, many questions remain. What is it going to take for this building to either no longer exist or to exist in a better condition? It, it, is it going to take somebody else losing a life? Is, 
it's just, I don't know. A family searching for answers. Ben, the building has been vacant for more than a decade. Do you know why there was electricity there? Well, Patrick, we don't. We reached out to We Energies with that question. The company would only say that they are cooperating with a police investigation. Diaz's family says Victoriano did not believe that there was electricity here. He even brought a generator to power many of his tools. Patrick. Ben Wagner reporting tonight in Milwaukee. At this time, I would like to personally offer my condolences to the Diaz family. Nothing can prepare you for the loss of a loved one. I hope you've been able to find closure. Since the tragedy occurred, Northridge has remained under the radar. The property is secured and security is on site. The owner of the former Boston store donated the abandoned anchor building to the city and preparations for demolition have begun with removal of asbestos and other hazardous materials from the structure. Currently, the rest of the mall is tied up in a lawsuit between Black Spruce and the city. So while the legal issues are taking place, the mall continues to stand as a shell of its former self, awaiting whatever fate may come.